Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for the opportunity to come and share with you. My name is Stubion Torbakke. I'm a Swede, hence the reference to traveling far. But I work for a German company, Nimsta. Um, the brief I've been given is to present our very special pick to light solution. I will not quite follow the brief because in order to understand the uniqueness of our approach to the pick to light, you need to understand the context in which that pick to light sits and also to understand NIMSTA. And therefore, I will be speaking about our core product, the industrial smartwatch, and the light tags, and a bit about NEMSTA. We're absolutely obsessed with processes and process efficiency and efficiency increases. And when we talk process here, we're primarily talking inbound, putting, picking, sorting, packing processes. There are others that we support as well, but those are the primary ones. And we do that through three core steps. It is the process in itself, to digitize or further digitize a shit process, pardon my French, will only give you a digitized shit process. So there is a consultative element that we or our partners like Barcode IT will perform, which is look together with you at the processes where you have the most efficiency gains to win and look at where that process potentially is inefficient or even deficient and correct those things and then look at implementing them, which is the people part. For a process to be efficient, it needs to be accepted by the pickers. And there are two steps to accepting the process. One is understanding them, so the mental bit. And this is something we work with by providing step-by-step -step guidance through the process, giving them the information they need to perform a step, and then new information for the next step, rather than throwing all at them at the same time. The second thing is because we are talking about a smartwatch, a back of hand scanner that is worn, it needs to be comfortable. If they don't accept having it, it's too heavy, it doesn't do the job, batteries don't last, they itch, or whatever it is, it's not gonna be an accepted solution. And finally, the technology piece, which is then to provide the right technology, enough features to sustain or to support the process efficiency gains we want to achieve. So, if we look at this, I said, we break up the process into steps. And this is an example of that. This is different screen layouts on the smartwatch. It is touchscreen enabled, so we allow bi-directional communication, which is quite unique. We have the choice to, for example, select language. Um, all Latin characters are supported, so any language that is based on Latin characters, we can provide you with. Second step there is an instruction, a bin location, and information about quantity and the article and where the picker picks by scanning the location, the article, or both, depending on the situation. Because the communication is bi-directional, we're able to throw in an inventory on the fly based on a threshold that you as a customer set might be single digit items remaining in that bin is now that you have picked your quantity, there should be seven left. Is that correct? Yes, no. 
and then you can take that information, the picker can correct if it's wrong and confirm back to the WMS. And if you do that twice per shift per picker, that is going to make a huge difference on your overall accuracy of the inventory in the WMS. Next screen is a confirmation, um, then multi-line article, and then starting a sub-process, which could be printing a transport label, uh, asking a locus robot to come pick up the, um, the stuff that I have picked or similar. If we now throw the light tags into the system, well, obviously they are relevant in the picking steps. So when I now have the bin location and I'm supposed to pick, the light tag at that bin will flash in the color that is associated with my the picker's color of the smartwatch. So they will flash together. With this combination, we increase picking speeds by up to 50%. We can guarantee 0% error rate. One, because the process is more easily understood by the picker. That's the carrot part. And then there's a stick part to it. We'll lock the process. Until you've scanned the right barcode, all the smartwatch will do is blink in red, vibrate, and beep. And you don't get further until you scan the right process or the right barcode. And there's also, again, that instruction piece makes it extremely easy to onboard and get new workers productive. If you look at the 3PL business, for example, is a very common first step into the labor market for young people and also immigrants. Hence the reference back to the, the uh, selection of language at the beginning. So this is the system. If we look on the right hand side, we have the, the base of the system, literally, because that's the bearer, that's what you wear on your hand, the cuff or the sleeve. No electronics in them, super comfortable, made out of um, Ecotech certified yarn, elastic, different sizes. The other one is neoprene. Neither of them contain any silicone, so they're suitable for the automotive industry. This one is a one size fits all. The other one come in four different sizes. Right hand, green, uh, right hand, blues color, left hand, green. And the same thing that goes for the trigger pads. The trigger pad is blue for right hand, green for left. And in the blue text box, you have the actual scan engine. The trigger pad attaches to the bottom of that. And then that unit attaches via Velcro to the cuff or the sleeve which allows you to position the smartwatch according to the size of your hand and your comfort. Also, the actual trigger button and the, uh, the adjoining part attaches with Velcro. So I have ladies' hands, short thumb. I can position it so I can still reach the trigger without accidentally invoking a scan when I'm picking using both my hands carrying something. Then on the uh, left hand side further down, other types of trigger pads for used for less uh, scan intensive applications where I'll trigger the scan from the touch screen instead. Uh, could be worn in a lanyard, could be worn on a, on a zipper like that. And then the, uh, the charging single slot or 10 slot charging. So again, process, you pick the pieces that suit your process that you need from a P 
people point of view, get the right size, get the type, left hand, right hand, that suits you. So you're most comfortable in working with this. And then finally, technology-wise, well, we call ourselves an industrial smartwatch. So we follow all the industry standards there from a technology point of view. We're IP65. We have the usual drop specs like everyone else has. We have inductive charging, meaning that there are no contacts that can be damaged or cause errors. And that follows the QI standard. So technically, you can use other chargers than, than ours to do it. Fast charging to ascertain that you never with a device that is not going to last you through the shift. If we then look as so this is the only technical picture I'm going to do, and it's going to be a very much overview picture. So industrial smartwatch is a back of hand scanner. It speaks only Bluetooth. It's not a full blown computer. It interacts with a media device. That media device is a relay station. It conveys information from the back end to our app where the logic sits and then on to the smartwatch and vice versa the other direction. That media device can be a consumer Android phone. It can be a rugged device from any of our friends at Zebra or Honeywell or Datalogic. Um, it can be a forklift computer. It could even technically be a Raspberry Pi running Linux. We do not do iOS, which in Europe doesn't exist in this kind of environment. It does in the US, but not here. So we're provided the pick list from the WMS or the ERP. We work our logic on it and break it into the step-by-step -step instructions. The picker performs what they're supposed to do, potentially confirms, and then the data is sent over the app back to the backend. And if we throw, throw in the light tags, this is where they fit. So when the instruction of go pick this item at this bin location goes out to the smartwatch, the light tag, knowing that it corresponds to that bin location, gets the message, ah, I'm also going to light up. And now I would have done, I would have braved and done a, a, a Carl thing and tried to do a lobby demo had I had my roll up. Unfortunately, to see it live, you will need to go to my drone warehouse back in the corner after the presentation. But at least I can walk you through and see what a picking process will look like when we run it down there. So I have received a pick list that consists of two jobs. I am going to do a number of picks with a couple of different instructions or feedbacks or possibilities for me to interact with that process as a picker. And you'll see the screen how that changes. So the first thing is I start my pick, this we discussed, I'll go for English. As an overview, I am as a picker told you're going to pick two jobs. Okay, I confirm. And now I have to scan the box, crate, tote, cart, whatever I'm picking into, onto. And then I receive the uh, instruction of my first pick. Bin location, quantity, article. I go there, I scan it, I get my next. And given that the example here are chocolate bars, non-serialized items, 
what's going to happen with a picker. There isn't a picker in the world who will pick seven and scan the individual barcodes of the seven pieces, right? They will take the seven and they'll go beep, 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 beep seven times on the first item. So, which is fine. So what we do is we confirm that you're scanning the right article. And once you have that, we allow the picker to say, yes, I have taken all seven. So we take away five scans. We replace one scan with a confirmation. And we've shortened the process. Next step. Next bin location, I'm picking one. I pick one, and now we throw in that inventory on the fly. There should be seven left. Is that correct? No, it's not. I selected. Then I get the chance to adjust the quantity. There's actually only five left. And I confirm, and then that sent the back to the WMS or the ERP system. The other example now, I'm supposed to pick 10 from the bin location 0308, I come there and there's only eight. This is a customer who does not allow me to part deliver. This could be a manufacturing process. Sorry, you didn't get all the wheel bolts on your car because there was a shortage, but we gave you the ones we had. Doesn't work, right? So in this case, you see the little option button right at the top of the screen. That's always there on all screens. Allows you to bring up a submenu. And in this case, I have confirmed storage and show last article on page one. I can go to page two. Theoretically, if we didn't say page one, page two, we just said one, two, three, we could have more sub pages, more processes to start so we can get up to high single digit amount of processes that you can start. And in this case, on the page two, I'll go skip article. And that was the last article I was picking here. So in this example, I start an AGV that picks up the goods and drives off with it. That could have been print a transport label or whatever instead. And then I'm prompted to scan the barcode for the next pick, so the tote, the crate, you know. So that's the process, and that's how you work with it. And this reduces error rate, as I said, and it makes the life easier for the picker. And we can also do multi-picking, and especially for uh, the Bentley gentleman, seen as there was a reference to Autostore, Cardex, is an OEM partner of ours. They have taken the NIMSTA and provided together with their, um, what they're called, um, <laughs> uh, their high level storage units. And I'll just have a short video. There's no sound to it, so you're not missing anything just music so let's see if I can I could yeah let me just do this I'll just do that so this is an illustration of multi order picking where she picks all the things that come down in that particular bin but it needs to go into different orders And here you see that's not a screen, that's an all-in-one. So that is the relay station running the software for Cardex, but also the uh, relaying the information to the NIMSTA smartwatch. And that showed the error handling as well, where she initially put it in the wrong bin. It indicated no. That's not where it's supposed to go. Look, reread the instruction, do it right, and then you can continue in the process. So, finally, pick by light. And 
The poster you see on the far right, that's the one I should have had. Uh, its resemblance might not be perfect, but I, I made it an attempt. I might get an A for effort, but not, not for artistic quality. So, the pick by light, what you see on that picture is what you get. How many have, of you have looked at pick by light and are sort of familiar with, with what it means? Anyone give me the major um, hindrances to implementing pick by light? Sorry? So typically, initial cost, the tags in themselves vary hugely in price, depending on the functionality of them, how so sophisticated they are. Wiring, especially if you're looking at retrofitting them in an existing warehouse that is already operational, then you have the productivity loss as well. Can you do it with your own staff? Do you need to bring people in? All those things. That's why we've taken a very different approach and why that sits in the smartwatch context. What you see there is what you get. A LED screen on a box with a Bluetooth receiver inside and two AA batteries, standard AA batteries. That will give you a rough lifetime of three years on a tag. As simple as that. So back to the whole concept and thought about making it easy to make processes more efficient. So I'll now run a very short video where Florian, one of our two CEOs, picks. He has initially picked without the support of light tags, which you're welcome to come by and try with me as well. So I have that set up as well. And now he does the pick with light tags. Now she shows the comparison result. 54% is not realistic. That's not what we achieve with the customers that have piloted and really thoroughly tested there in their production environments, but they are typically between 30 and 40% faster just by the pick by light. And if you're looking at large warehouses, well, obviously, an experienced picker will know roughly which, which aisle, what section of the warehouse they're heading to, so that they'll do automatically. But it's that last mile, hopefully not, but the last 10, 20 meters, where they visually direct can zone in on the bin location, go there and pick. And then the next slide comes up. So this is how we try to put value together. Hands-free solution. We try to optimize the workflows. You get the step-by-step -step instructions. Easy to locate if you use the light touch display to work back and forth. Minimal training to get sorted. And then process. That's the job you have to do together with the end customer, or I won't have to, Nigel and Jonathan will have to do, is to work. But we have plenty of process templates that you work with and just make the adjustments to make it suit your specific process. And that is what goes into the workflow in the NIMSTA. Error rate, we talked about previously both by keeping inventory up to date and also by uh, stopping the process so you don't get further until you've done it right. 
100% employee satisfaction. That's all about the, the wearability, the, the, the ease of use of the solution. And finally, integration, which of course is a key thing. And there are plenty of people here to, uh, to talk to about that. Um, Ivanti have done a great job in preparing integration to, uh, to the Nimstart smartwatch. So they have plenty of screen layouts and ready-made scripts to tie that into the back end. The same thing goes for Stay Linked. I heard that SAP was mentioned previously as ERP systems. We do, being a German company, have lots of customers that run on, on SAP and especially EWM. So that is an easy way as well. And any no-code, load-code platform makes that easy as well. So a Neptune software or a, uh, a Red Panda or similar that are here on the UK market would be able to assist with that. And then finally, some of the customers that use us. So we have practically all the food retailers in Germany in their logistics chain up to back of store. You have Mercadona on there, so we're in Iberia as well. E-commerce, 3PL and then manufacturing companies that use us in their internal logistics processes. So Mercedes-Benz on there, uh, John Deere, this is about small parts storage and, and uh, spare parts, but also I believe in Mercedes, it's a question of being used in production as well. That was it. Um, very happy if you want to talk. Uh, I'll happily talk process, people, technology with you. I will not talk commercials. That you do to barcode IT. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.